Hi, welcome back to The Truth Doctor Show. My name is Dr. Courtney Tracy, and I'm known as The Truth Doctor. On this show, I talk about the world through a mental health lens, using pop culture and the media as my medium. Today, I'm reacting to the finale of Netflix new series, Wednesday, season one, episode eight. And I cannot wait to watch this episode. Let's dive right in. So, uh, is this a date? It's a surprise. She doesn't like surprises. You don't think? I don't think. I know. Kinbot probably discovered your secret during one of your sessions, so she unlocked you. Why'd you kill her? I'm not a monster. And if you really thought that I was, why would you risk bringing me out to the woods to confront me alone? You said I was alone. Oh. You're coming with us. Siren. Oh my God, Bianca and Wednesday getting together. We could tell that in episode four at the Raven, when they started opening up to each other about what was really going on within them internally, caring about what people thought about them or not, knowing what people really felt about them or not, and the fact that they were coming together and talking about those things means that there was a level of intimacy there enough for this to take place. Your father fell in love and married an outcast. Fine, my mom was an outcast. It doesn't make me a monster. Her postpartum depression triggered her condition. My mom had severe bipolar disorder. We both know that's a lie. She was a hide. Bipolar disorder is a mood disorder, a mood condition that has two different types, bipolar one and bipolar two. In bipolar one, somebody experiences at least one manic episode and then possibly depressive episodes. Bipolar two is somebody experiences hypomanic episodes and then also depressive episodes. Depressive episodes meet the criteria for a major depressive disorder. It's the same criteria, but it's just a major depressive episode. So these are gonna be symptoms like lethargy, difficulty concentrating, not having pleasure in the things that you used to before, having sleep issues, eating issues, being irritable. Now, manic episodes and hypomanic episodes include the same symptoms symptoms, except a manic episode is going to last for seven days or longer, and a hypomanic episode is going to last at least four days, but less than seven days. Symptoms of manic or hypomanic episodes include decreased need for sleep, excessive talking, really unusually elevated or irritable mood, a decrease in goal-directed behavior, but the person may be agitated and moving around a lot, but it's not actually resulting in any outcome. It's very misdirected. And then also flight of ideas and some paranoia. Now, that's very different than this character that's become a hide in this show. But one thing that was really great that they touched on is when they talked about his mom having postpartum depression that exacerbated these symptoms that she was having. Oftentimes when let's say we're born, let's say it's like the hide gene, right? We're born with the potential to experience mental health issues or mental health disturbances. And the thing is, when most people say that mental health disorders are a combination of genetics and environment, that's exactly what they're talking about. We can be born with a gene that has the potential to have us act or think or feel a certain way, but usually it's an external experience that can either activate or deactivate certain genes that can cause us to present in certain ways. I'm begging you, please. episode this is gonna be wild i'm increasingly concerned i believe the trauma of losing his mother may have left tyler with deeper psychological scars than i suspected losing his mother could have left him with deeper psychological scars than i expected going through the loss of a parent is so significantly overwhelming whether we've had a good relationship with our parent or not. I wonder also if Tyler's hide became activated after he lost his mother. I don't know if that's the case, but I do remember when they were talking about the hide being activated, it's either from a master or from when they're experiencing stressful or traumatic situations. So this could very well be the case. Hey, drop, it. drop it! Drop it! What does it feel like? What does what feel like? to lose fear is so primal i could taste it and it was delicious oh <gasps> you have oh. no idea what's coming oh my god what the f okay <laughs> oh my god okay 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 that was so malicious and conniving and manipulative like how long did he know even know i don't even know i don't even know what to say the look in wednesday's eyes 
the expression on her face, the slight quiver and the sound of her breathing, how incredibly upsetting to finally open yourself up to somebody after this entire experience and to feel like there was one person that you could trust and that was the exact person that was manipulating you and confusing you and haunting you essentially and in a way making fun of you, watching you, as you're trying to figure out the truth when they know the truth. Now, a lot of people get this term wrong, the term gaslighting. And of course, that's an experience where you are around another person and they and you know the truth and they are continuously denying your reality over and over and over again to the point where you start to question whether or not you can trust yourself. This could be an example of gaslighting if he knew for quite a while and continued to mislead her. That was a super intense experience and I am feeling very misled because if you recall from the last episode, I said, okay, Tyler's such a gentle soul. Gentle soul. He's such a gentle soul. <laughs> Oh my God. Oh, wow. Wow. Was I wrong about that? There is no more time and there are no more deals Wednesday. Pack your steamer trunks. What are you doing here? I know you're not the hide. Tyler used me to frame you. He is the actual hide. I saw it in a vision when he kissed me. Physical intimacy is something that activates a chemical reaction within your body, your brain, and your mind. And it's something that a lot of people take to be very sacred. So when he starts to step back, what happens often when we're stepping back in situations where we find out something that we don't want to find out is that we are not necessarily trying to remove ourselves from the situation, but we're having such an intense experience that we almost unconsciously back away because our brain wants the ability to process what it is that's going on and it doesn't want to take in anything else. I'm glad you were getting some action while I was falsely accused. You can tell in the sound of his voice and the way that he says that, that that was an extremely painful thing for him to hear. This isn't about us, Savior. No, it's about you. Every time you get involved, people get hurt. You're toxic. Ooh. All you ever do is make things worse. When we categorize people into being toxic or not toxic, it truly doesn't allow for the type of nuance and complexity that goes inside each person. You can see that this is not the first time that Xavier has used his words to pull himself farther away from Wednesday and push Wednesday farther away from him. All the work that Wednesday's been putting in to try to form relationships and to feel as though she's progressing and connecting with people, she's experienced multiple back steps. She's ex especially in her relationship with Xavier, who now is just thinking that she's toxic when they could have had the potential for a really good relationship. Do you understand? That can't happen if you're not here. That's how you save everyone. Being in jail is such a traumatizing experience, especially to have Xavier having a chain around his neck because they think that he's the hide is something that, that is so physiologically and psychologically damaging to a person. Being an innocent person put through what people are put through in, in the correctional system is unbearable psychologically. Enid, the mark you have left on me is indelible. Anytime I grow nauseous at the sight of a rainbow or hear a pop song that makes my ears bleed, I'll think of you. Most people spend their entire lives pretending to give zero Fs and you literally never had an F to give. What a sweet compliment. So we're gonna... Oh. You're right. Not hugging is kind of our thing. I shouldn't have gone to the dance. I should have been with you. When the dance floor calls, you gotta answer. That night, in the woods, someone set fire to that cave. Yes, Dr. Kenbot. And those boots. What about her boots? I thought that they weren't black, they were red. The red boots that I talked about in episode one. Show the clip. There was something about those boots that were covered in dirt that made me feel like she might have something to do with it. Typically I have great admiration for well-executed revenge plots, but yours was a bit extreme, even for my high standards. Oh dear. Weems was right. 
You do need psychiatric help. There is no shame in needing psychiatric help. And the fact that that was used as a diss is something that I'm not really that cool with. If any of you are on psychiatric medications and I was just on some for the last year, it's completely fine. It does not mean that you're less than. It does not mean that there's something wrong with you. It means that you feel like you would like to take a medication to help regulate your brain while you start to work on coping skills so that you can accomplish what it is that you want in life. If anybody ever makes fun of you or shames you or disrespects you for taking medications, I'm sorry, but if anything, that would be somebody that I think would need to go and talk to someone because that's completely inappropriate, extremely biased, and really just goes to show that they have no idea how the human mind and body work and how the experiences that people go through throughout their lives can lead them to need medication-based support. Tyler told me everything. That's why you targeted Tyler. You manipulated him by showing him what his mother truly was. Now what Tyler didn't realize is that the truth wouldn't free him. I'm so sorry. Ugh, that's enough. All these people. Tyler, honey, make mama happy and shut her up. Permanently. Yeah, that's right. My name is no <laughs> Principal Weems and her went and confronted Miss Thornhill, but I haven't heard a peep from either of them. Crackstone's crypt, what the heck? Who are the nightshades? Oh my god, I can't even look at him anymore. Kind of a deja vu thing we got going on, huh? Tyler's been collecting all of these body parts to resurrect Crackstone. The one man who nearly succeeded in eradicating the outcasts. I am of your blood. I have summoned you. Oh. Now burn in the eternal fires of hell. I can't believe Come you're on. in a society and you didn't tell me. Because... Okay, you guys like you just know, started dating. It's secret. Okay, I'm gonna have to shift gears out of my shock for a moment to talk about this situation with Ajax and Enid. When someone has something to tell a person that they're interested in or that they recently started dating, you don't have to tell them right away before you start dating them. You don't have to tell them as soon as you start dating them and you don't have to tell them shortly after you started dating them. We as human beings have very intimate details of our life that can very easily be used against us. One example of this that we saw was when Enid and Wednesday were fighting in their dorm room and they were saying very true things about one another after getting to know each other and they were using them in a negative way to hurt each other's feelings. With Ajax, the importance of keeping the secret society a secret is because one, it's not only his secret, and two, it's not necessarily something that's going to get in the way of his relationship with Enid, at least probably not something that he's thinking is going to get in the way. We deserve boundaries on the things that we have going on in our life up until a certain point. There isn't a fine rule on telling everybody everything about us when we start dating them. I would say that that starts to change once the relationship becomes really committed and you guys start to talk about actually forming your life together because then some of the secrets that you may be keeping and maybe not secrets but some of the aspects of yourself your life or your family or your past that you aren't telling your partner may impact your partner's life later on down the line and in those circumstances it's going to be important to talk to your partner about those things so that they have at least what we call in the therapist world informed consent. You can't consent to something if you don't know what you're actually consenting to. We'll use our siren song to convince him. Okay, now her siren song is really coming in handy. And my hope is that she feels empowered by it by the end of this, or at least maybe in the second season. <laughs> all sad though okay 
Oh, oh, the sheriff losing his wife and his son. What demon sorcery is this? <laughs> Stay away from her! I might not get to kill all the outcasts, but at least I'll get to kill you Wednesday. Hummer stick together, right? Amazing. I'll take it from here. Maybe we should call the sheriff. Turn around, Eugene. In the very beginning of this series, I talked about the different types of empathy that Wednesday had or did not have or did not showcase in this show, I guess. We had cognitive empathy, emotional empathy, and compassionate empathy. Cognitive empathy is there. We talked about how she is aware of how people are affected and in what way, intellectually. Then we have emotional empathy, the ability to feel what the other person is feeling. And then there's compassionate empathy, the ability to imagine what someone may be experiencing, have the potential to experience it as well, and then try to prevent that person compassionately from having that experience. When she told Eugene, to turn around she was expressing the full experience of empathy and i absolutely love that they gave that example at the end of this season hmm. she hugged her hmm. oh my, my God. very first stalker stalker become tomorrow's nemesis <laughs> I know the suspense is killing you. Okay, wow. How am I feeling at the end of this? I am literally still feeling shock. I don't even know what to say. That was so overwhelming. I, I'm truly, truly still shocked at the way that they had Tyler shift and also the way that they had Miss Thornhill shift. The amount of just frankly disgusting manipulation that we saw take place but from these two characters in this last episode is i'm still trying to have it settle within me this series was incredible many psychological concepts i'm so excited if you haven't already heard this show is renewed for a second season i will be reacting to the second season i want to thank all of you for coming along in the comments and participating on this journey with me giving me recommendations pointing out things that i didn't realize and keeping the spoilers out of the comments so that you guys could get a combination of three Three things that I do on my shows. The first thing that I do is I provide you psychoeducation based off of the themes and the behaviors, thoughts, and feelings that they showcase to the characters in this show. The second thing that I do is give you my raw and real reaction. I think that it's important that you know that I'm really watching this alongside you and I am a fan of whatever I'm watching as well. And the third thing is being able to read the comments and allow you all to be a part of the experience. I'm not going anywhere and I know that I'm just somebody that you watch on YouTube, but I hope that I give you insight into what it is that you're experiencing. Now tomorrow, we're starting our new series. We'll come out with episodes every Thursday and I'll be reacting to The Last of Us. My name is Dr. Courtney Tracy. I'm known as the Truth Doctor. I care about each of you so much. Much, and that's why I always say at the end of every show, I'm so glad that you exist. So instead of saying see you next Wednesday, instead I'll say see you tomorrow. Bye.